joiner right there. This is a joiner. Let's look at the parts of it. Right here, we got the in feed table. Right here, in feed table, because the board goes in. This is the out feed table, because the board goes out. So we put a board through this way, right? And then we got our blade guard, and you'll notice that it kind of swings out of the way as we're using it to expose the blade. Our blade is in here. Come take a look. And we've got a cylinder. There's actually three blades on this, and it starts spinning towards us, and then it's going to catch the board right there. Uh, we also have this fence right here, and the key to using this thing is making sure that the board is against the fence and against the table when we use this thing. And we just mentioned uh, that the blade is spinning this way, so if a board gets caught, it's going to go this way. It's going to kick back behind me. You can see that right here. Kickback danger to the right. Okay, kickback danger to the right. A couple things about it too, board size. We need a board that is 12 inches long. Right, so this is 12 inches minimum right there. And then it also has a red line that's faded. I need to repaint it to make sure our board is long enough, 12 inches minimum. If it is too short, it tends to fall in that gap if I was trying to uh, do this one right here. So we want to make sure that, hey, the camera right there. So this can fall into the gap, right? And so we don't want that to happen. So we want to make sure we have a board that's long enough so it can be supported on both sides as we make our cut. <clears throat> For safety reasons, boards should be taller than the fence. This th thickness doesn't matter. What matters is that we want it taller than the fence. Um, uh, we don't want our hands that close to that blade as we're making the cut. We just get closer and closer. I want your hands safe. Let's have boards that are thicker, taller, than the fence when you run them through on here. So um, we can do some angled cuts on here. We can take this fence and turn it down. We're typically not gonna do that. We're gonna run stuff through on the joiner. We typically only use this to clean up these edges. So right now we got this bad edge on this thing. It looks like somebody cut it on the bandsaw. And so I'm going to fire up, just kidding, pause. Good, are we recording? Uh, the power wasn't on up front. We needed to run up there and turn it on. So, turn on the power. We're going to let it come up to full speed. And then, work right here. Back up. Back up. But then, I'm holding. Hand right here. Hand right here. Pushing in. No little pressure down. So, Gotta wait for that to go down so you can hear me. The after I run a board through, our goal is to get a nice flat surface on there. And so I'm gonna look right here, come and look, to see if I see any gaps down here on this edge. Okay, so I'm looking along there, and we gotta know if there's any like waves in it. That's what we're trying to cut out of it. Okay, and so we'll um, to run it if we need to, we'll run it through again. But right now I can see that I got a nice clean surface. That's our goal. Couple things I did, I was, I was on there, I kind of showed hand pressure against the fence. We don't want it kind of moving around on there. Um, I got, I put a hand behind it to try and make sure the board goes forward and doesn't get caught and push back on me. And then um, the other thing is we put a little bit of pressure down. We don't need to push down on this. The way the blade catches, it grabs right here and kind of pulls the board down. So we just put a little bit of pressure down. We don't have to push down hard. You push down hard, that's dangerous because then I could fall into the blade. So just a little bit of pressure downwards and then um, go along with it. Uh, you'll notice I started here and as you're running a board, you should walk along with it. I've seen people stand back here and they try and lean and it just looks awkward and you're over the blade and I'm not balanced. So walk with your board as you make your cut here. Um, let's double check on the this if we got any... That I missed. Always check to make sure that the guard covers uh, are on before you use in the joiner. Yes, blade guard is in place. Material should be started with the out feed table and ran through the in feed table. No, that would be backwards. Okay, this, uh, you know, if you think about it right here, it, it shouldn't open up for us. We want to make sure that the blade guard is going to open up. So we always feed from the right side to the left side. Eye protection is only necessary if the principal is in the shop. False. Keep it on. As a general rule, a 16th is uh, about the depth that we're gonna cut on here, yes. So we're only taking off a little bit at a time. 
we can adjust that with this wheel here. Will uh, We could cut more by lowering down this table. We're not going to do that. We're going to start with a small cut. It's not going to grab very hard. Uh, a lot of beginners in here. And so if we need to, we'll just run it through a couple times. Typically, only need to run it through once. It is safe to use a push stick if your fingers would otherwise be close to the blade. And we're going to say that's true. Um, we talked about this piece here. We could potentially use a push stick with it. If we got to here and we were over the top of the blade, we could grab our push stick and then finish the cut there and keep our hands out of the way so that we're not getting too close. Okay, so we could use a push stick on smaller stuff, but in general, I'm not gonna make you do that. We just want boards that are taller than the fence to be safer for us. Um, if a piece of wood is too long to handle by yourself, stop, start lifting weights, false, okay? If we've got a really long board, you're probably gonna need somebody else to support it out here. Uh, and then also when you come through, you're gonna have to support it on this end, as, on the other end as well. So I wanna make sure to uh, support it the whole way. Sorry, the minimum length of a material that can be rammed through is eight inches. That's false because it should be 12 inches. It says it right on there. The joiner works very well for making edges parallel. And that is false. Parallel meaning that these two edges are the same and they'll never intersect. Right now, if these two are off, we can't use the joiner to fix that. What we do is run it through once on here. And then if we want it parallel, we'll go to the table saw, put this side against the fence, and we'll cut a line right here. Then that will be parallel. This, this tool cannot make parallel edges. So uh, typically, I'm only using it to clean one edge because next I'm going to go to the table saw and cut off the end. Other end, you can notice that this side, then the color difference, we, this is what I cut. So I make sure that's against the fence, and then we'd just be cutting this to whatever width we needed afterwards on the table saw. The, it is not possible to tilt the fence at an angle on the joiner. False. It is uh, possible. You can tilt this fence down. We're, we're not going to be doing that, though. Pressure is needed on material against both the fence and the table. Yes, we want to put a little bit of some pressure against the fence, make sure it's tight, and then we need to push down a little bit. What is the main use of a joiner? The main use is to clean up the edge of the board. There's different types or names for the parts of the board. So we've got the edge, we've got the face out here, and this is our surface, right? Or sorry, this is the end, and this is the, the face or the surface up here. So uh, we're always cutting the edge over here on the joint. Who we got next? Name two ways of extending the sharpness of the blades. Only click cut one side, and then also inspect your board. If you've got nails or screws or anything in your board, it's going to tear this blade up real fast. So it's got to be a clean board before we put it in. Why is it important to never wood run across the grain? And I'm going to show that one, actually. We'll see what happens here. So we, we cut with the grain on this tool. So we get a nice clean edge when we did that one. I have a little bit bigger board. This board, you're not supposed to run in uh, because of the length, right? We're not long enough. It is taller than the fence, but it should be 12 inches. I'm going to run it through so you can hear the difference. I'll run both edges. I'm going to run this edge, and then I'll run that edge. And listen to the difference. I can hear this across the room that somebody's making the wrong cut. So, pressure here. That was a good example. I'll wait until that fall. So it, I was running this along. You can see that it tore up this back edge and it tore off that back end, right? This is why we only cut the edge of the board. We don't want to put it through that way and end up with a board like this, okay? A better cut would be take it to the chop saw and make your cut over there, okay? That's the right tool. So depending on the characteristics of the board and talking about the grain is going to tell you which tool you should be on. So I believe that's it. Just because I, I am in the habit of tearing up papers, I'm going to tear it up. Go.